Sonny, if anybody needs me, I'll be at the courthouse. Not so fast, old man. Who the hell are you calling old? You got a few things to answer to first, Asa. I do? Like what? Like what you've been doing to my son. You can try all you want to mess with my life, Asa, but my boy is strictly off limits. Why'd your dad say these signs were here? Oh, some boring stuff about people shouldn't come here. But I think he put them up to keep out ghosts. I don't think these signs are working too good. Me neither. I know that um, this place and this whole thing is really hard on you, but it's okay. I, 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 I'm trying to get over what happened to me, but I also want to be able to support you, too. Well, I don't want you to go in there if it makes you crazy, but I really need someone to talk to. Well, you got her. That's me. Can you be impartial? I mean, I, I need someone objective. I, I'll do my best. What's the problem? I think I might be wrong about what Kevin did or maybe didn't do to me. What's happening at the paper? The presses are still down. If we don't get things straightened out, there might not be an evening edition. Oh, man. Things must be pretty bad if Vicky's not back here by now. Like I said, it's a real mess. Nora, you don't think Hank would call Rachel as a witness, do you? I don't know, Kevin. He just might. He's got to understand that he can't use me to hurt Kevin. He's got to understand that. All rise. Oh, yay, oh, yay. The Court of Common Pleas of Lantano County is now in session. The Honorable Judge Fitzwater presiding. Be seated. Is the Commonwealth ready with its next witness? Yes, Your Honor. The Commonwealth calls Rachel Gannon. What are you so fired up about, Holden? About you terrorizing my boy. I have better things to do with my time than frightening little kids. Oh, even if you think it would get Luna and me to change our minds about selling Serenity Springs? Holden, I've got a son in the hospital. I've got a grandson in trial for rape. I sure as hell don't need you coming with these idiotic charges. I am sorry about Clint. I am sorry about Kevin. But you are going to stay right here and you're going to answer my questions. If I knew the answers, I don't even know what you're talking about, so get out of my way. Yeah? What about this? What about it? I went to Serenity Springs, talked turkey to you, left my Stetson, so what? So my son is seeing ghosts now, that's what. I'm not surprised, living with two dipsy doodles like you and Luna. Is that my fault? I thought my son was just seeing things until I realized how terrified he was. And then I found this. Ooh, that's so frightening. I started thinking when you came by yesterday. My son's been scared out of his mind from all these things he's seeing. Ever since I turned you down on your offer to buy Serenity Springs, I've seen a few things myself that if I were six years old would frighten me. Could you get to the point? Yeah, but I always thought there was a logical explanation for all this creepy things going on. Doors opening and closing, lights flickering, fireplaces lighting up with no one there. Max, lay off the mineral water. I think you're hallucinating. Oh, I even considered that too, Asa. Then I realized it was you all along. 
scaring little kids, Asa. I thought even you couldn't stoop that low. No, I'll tell you what's really low, you. This ridiculous accusation of yours. No, ridiculous would be if I accused Bo or Vicky or Joe. You? The stits and fits, Asa. There it is. That's the place. That for sure wasn't there the last week. What do you think it is? I think this is where they're coming from. Who? The Earth Spirit. That Luna was worried about. You know, the ghosts that are haunting Serenity Springs. So what do you think we should do? We gotta stop them right now. I've gotta do something. First, I thought it might just be, you know, beating myself up with these doubts that I had about Kevin. But now I'm really afraid that I might have mixed him up with the other three. I was in so much pain that night, and, and, and I kept going in and out of consciousness. Oh, boy. But you are sure that Powell, Zach, and Todd did rape you, though. You're just not sure about whether Kevin did or not. OK. Marty, if you're not sure whether Kevin raped you or not, you have got to stop these proceedings against him. But I'm not sure if he didn't either. I don't know what I'm thinking anymore. I, I don't know what I remember and what I'm just mixing up in my head. Have you told anybody else about this? I told them. Uh, Hank and I told Jason. What did they say? Oh, they said, what do you think they said? They said, of course Kevin did it. Well, they can't be, they're not very impartial. Well, Kevin is concerned, though. What do you think? I don't know. All right. All right, we, we just need to sit down right here and, and get some deep breaths. Ooh. Take a couple of deep breaths. How can you think if you're too upset to breathe? Well, just breathe here. Is that better? A little. That's why I need to talk to you. I mean, I don't know what to do. Do what's right. I don't know what's right. That's why I asked you here. I don't know what to do. I think you do, Marty. If you just, just listen to your heart, it will tell you what to do. Just listen, and it will tell you the truth. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have me question your daughter? State your name for the no, record, Kate, please. I know in my gut that she's hiding something, and I've got to Rachel get the truth Gavin. out of her myself. Hiding something address, like please. what? Evidence? Palace Hotel? Something she saw. Could you be more Kevin specific? Told her. I've got a good idea what it is. I've got to get the her address. to sit on the stand. And maybe then she'll see High Kevin Street. for what he really is. Here in Landview? Yes. Room number? 1217. Thank you. Your Honor, I'd like the record to indicate that the Commonwealth considers Rachel Gannon as a hostile witness and intends to question her as such. So noted. Let's talk about Todd Manning. You've testified that you knew him from campus and because he was, is a friend of Kevin Buchanan. Is that correct? Would you please answer verbally? Yes. Did Todd Manning make any remarks to you that you would interpret as racist? Objection, irrelevant. I withdraw the question, Your Honor. Did Todd Manning know that you and Kevin Buchanan were dating? We still are. At the time in question, did Todd Manning know that you and Kevin Buchanan were dating? Yes. And despite his knowledge of your relationship with Mr. Buchanan, 
Isn't it true that Todd Manning made sexual advances to you in Kevin's home? Objection, Your Honor. He's leading the witness. Witness has been deemed hostile. Objection overruled. Prosecution proceed. Is it true? Yes. Todd Manning did make advances to you while in Kevin's... Yes. And did you decline? Yes. And did Todd persist in his advances? I guess. What was your reaction? What do you mean? Objection. Your Honor, I'm simply asking the witness's reaction. I'll allow it. Would you please tell the court your reaction to Todd Manning's sexual advances? I wasn't all that surprised, I guess. And why is that? That's just the kind of guy Todd is. He doesn't take no for an answer. Objection! Let's say I did an insane thing like that, but I didn't. Scared the hell out of little Al conjuring up phony ghosts. Where do I find the time? You got the motivation, you got the money to hire someone to do it. That's your style, Asa. You don't know one blessed thing about me, Holden. I know all I care to. You don't know squat, boy. I may be ruthless. That's the way the world is. But to frighten a little boy, a six-year-old child, I could never do that. See, I learned the hard way from the stupid, thoughtless mistakes I made with Clinton Bow. And I learned just how fragile a boy can be. So you just get the hell out of my way with your crazy theories and let me stop this tramp, Marty Saybrook, from telling any more lies. All right, now you give Marty my best. You tell her I'm sorry that I can't be there this afternoon. Andrew, she knows that she's in your thoughts. You... She knows that you have other parishioners to counsel. No, just tell her that... Andrew, <laughs> she knows. And she knows that she's in your prayers. Prayers aren't enough. Seems like everything in this case that's said to support Marty makes her look like the guilty one. Even my testimony. I tried so hard to be careful. Andrew, it's all right. Well, I don't know that it's all right. These four men just might be acquitted, Andrew, Cassie. Andrew, you don't know that. All the testimony hasn't been heard yet. And if the worst does happen and they are acquitted, then you and I and Luna and Jason and Swade and Sheila are going to stand by Marty and help her get through this. But until then, we've got to take it as it comes. Okay. We're gonna have one smart kid. <laughs> one smart kid growing in there, because you got one smart mother, my friend. <sighs> and Marty, she has one good friend. you to listen very carefully, Miss Gannon, to the district attorney's questions and answer only what is asked of you. I'll let the record show that the uh, witness has acknowledged these remarks. Mr. Gannon. Your Honor, prosecution requests a short recess. The court will take a brief recess. The witness, please remain on the stand. Thank you. How are you doing? You feel better after talking with Luna? I just wish there was more evidence, so it wasn't coming down to my testimony. She's supposed to be a hostile witness for the prosecution, but so far all she's doing is crucifying my son. Women, you can never trust them. Mr. Manning, relax. 
because it ain't over till it's over. Yeah? <laughs> you say that now. How are you going to feel when it is over? And this so-called girlfriend of your nephew has wound up sending him to prison for 20 years. And Todd and the rest with him. Is the prosecution ready to continue? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any further questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Many more questions. I'd like for you to recall the day of the K.A.D. Spring Fling. Do you recall earlier that day deciding not to attend the party? Yes. Even though Kevin Buchanan had invited you? That's right. Why did you decline his invitation? I just didn't want to be there. Why not? I don't like the atmosphere of those big on-campus blowouts. What is it in particular about the atmosphere at the K.A.D. house that made you feel you didn't want to attend the party? Could you describe in as much detail as possible what the fraternity house was like that day? There was drinking going on even early in the day, and some of the fraternity brothers were making crude comments about partying. What do you mean, crude? They were fooling around with an inflatable doll. An inflatable doll? Like a punching bag? No. Could you please describe this inflatable doll? It was a woman. Who did you see fooling around with this inflatable doll? Some of the fraternity brothers. Uh -huh. And were any of the four defendants among those brothers? Todd was. Objection, Your Honor. I don't know where this line of questioning is going. Virtually every campus fraternity have wild parties with a wild edge to it. I mean, this is, a, this is totally irrelevant to the case. Your Honor, the witness's state of mind is relevant. The witness's state of mind was presumably influenced by the events of the day. Overruled. Proceed. So you elected not to attend the spring fling? Yes. And you changed your mind later that night? Yes. And you went to the party? Yes. Did you have anything alcoholic to drink before you went? No. Did you have anything to drink when you arrived? No. When you arrived at the frat house, did you see Kevin Buchanan? Yes. And approximately what time was it when you arrived? I guess it was about 11.30. And did you see Kevin Buchanan right away? No, not right away. How much time had passed between your arriving at the KED house and locating Mr. Buchanan? About half an hour. A half an hour. You didn't find him for a half an hour. Could you describe his appearance when you did find him? What do you mean, his appearance? I mean, what did he look like? Witness will please answer. He looked like he had been at a wild party, which he had. Could you... Please be more specific. He looked disheveled. And? And what? And wasn't there a scratch on his face? Wasn't there? Yes. And lipstick on his jacket. Objection! Did you see Marty Saybrook shortly after seeing Kevin Buchanan? Yes. And where was she? She was coming down the stairs. All right, excuse me. Let's just backtrack a second. Kevin had also come from upstairs. Same direction as Marty. 
Yes. Well, please continue. You saw Marty coming downstairs. What was her appearance when you saw her? She looked drunk. In what way drunk? Like she had trouble walking. Like it was hard to move. Like she had just been raped by four young men. Objection, Your Honor. The prosecution isn't leading the witness. He's dragging her. Sustained, Mr. I Gannon. I withdraw the question, Your Honor. Motion to strike, Your Honor. Granted. Please strike everything that the witness has answered after like it was hard to move. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> you said Marty appeared to have difficulty walking. Was she also disheveled? Was her hair messed up? No, not particularly. Were any articles of her clothing torn? I don't know. Why not? I couldn't see. She had on... Continue, please. What did Miss Saybrook have on? A sweater. A sweater? With this, did this sweater, did it conceal all of her other clothing? Just about, yeah. My. Must have been a, a large sweater. What kind of sweater was it? It was Kevin's fraternity sweater. And did you talk with Kevin at that time? Yes. And what did you say? I don't recall. Well, could you just give us a general nature of the conversation? Objection, Your Honor. The witness has just answered the question that she doesn't recall. Overruled. Witness will answer. You must remember something about the conversation. I mean, after all, you went to a party that you initially refused to attend in the midst of an intense thunder and lightning storm, specifically to see your boyfriend, Kevin Buchanan. Now, you're telling me and the court that you don't remember what you said when you saw him? No, I don't. Then let me help refresh your memory. These are affidavits from Janet Lee, Ken Robet, Beth Puglisi, Tim O'Malley. Do you know these people? <clears throat> yes. And do you recall their presence at the party? Yes. For these affidavits, they attest to the fact that they heard you address the defendant, Kevin Buchanan, in a loud voice. It was noisy there. As if in anger. They each attest that you made mention to the scratch on his cheek and a lipstick on his jacket. Do you remember any of this now? Stop it. Just answer the question. These four attest that you accuse Kevin Buchanan of having slept with Marty Saybrook. Does this sound familiar now? Did you accuse Kevin Buchanan of sleeping with Marty Saybrook? Daddy. Just answer the question. Did you accuse Kevin Buchanan of sleeping with Marty Saybrook? Yes. And what was his reply? Did he admit that you were correct? No. Oh, come on. No. He must have confided in you. He had to have given you some kind of an answer. Objection! What did he confess to you that you do not want to tell this court? Nothing. Nothing. You're pushing me and pushing me, and he didn't tell me anything. Just leave me alone. Objection. Take a short recess while the witness and the district attorney collect themselves. The 
defendant will return to his seat. Hank, for God's sake, let me continue when we resume. This is killing you. How could you do that to Rachel? Poor Rachel, what she must be going through. I tell you, for a minute there, I was actually with the DA on this one. It's kind of a kick watching him tear that Rachel apart after what she did on the stand to Todd's reputation. What a jerk. I never really liked Todd all that much. Now I kind of feel sorry for him. What's going on? Looks like everyone looks like they just saw a tornado tear up a town. Marty. Hank Gannon just ripped his daughter apart on the witness stand. Oh, no. Oh, poor Hank. Poor Rachel. What was the testimony? Made Kevin look pretty bad. It wasn't worth it. Hank put his daughter through the ringer over nothing. Over me. Marty. You are going to challenge the testimony about my son, aren't you? I mean, you're not going to leave Todd twisting in the wind. What's going on? Has this woman screwed up the case? No. Hey, would you shut up, both of you? Look, Nora will take care of Rachel's testimony on cross-examination. Mm -hmm. How? How tough can she be? That's our own daughter up there. This is trouble. No. Oh, baby, no. please. I'm okay. I don't want to leave it like this. Listen, I I'm gonna go call Andrew and I'll be right back. Excuse me. Yes? Are uh, you Reverend Carpenter's wife? Yes, can I help you? I have to talk to him. It's about the trial. It's very important. Here. It's real important. Okay. Come on in. Hi. Hi. Come on in. Sit up. Oh. What's up? It's about ghosts. About ghosts? Once I saw this movie where this man with a collar like yours got rid of some ghosts. Is somebody frightening you boys? No. We just want to get rid of the ghosts. Okay. Well, where do you think you've seen these, these, these things, these things you think are ghosts? They're at Al's house. They're all around Serenity Springs. They're earth ghosts. They're earth spirits. They're mad at us. They're mad at you? They're mad at you and CJ? No, me, Luna, and my dad. Well, maybe we ought to call Max and Luna and see if they can help, huh? No, 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 no. I never have trusted Asa, and I never will trust him. Well, I don't think that's any new news to me, Sugar. No, no, you don't understand. The thing is, after he swore up and down that he would never do anything to harm a child, I believed him. Well, I, I think you need to go with that. I don't know. Maybe we're just being naive, not thinking that us getting married in the fall won't raise a few figurative ghosts for Al. Figurative ghosts? About his mother. About Gabrielle. I know the kid loves you so much, but he's... He's got to be confused about her. And I know he keeps going on and on about wanting you to be his new mother, but... Where does that leave his feelings for Gabrielle? Yeah. Little as he remembers, she's still the only mother he's ever known. 
Maybe part of what's scaring him are these feelings for Gabrielle. I don't know. What do you think? I think that might be likely. But... But what? Well, I think that's definitely part of it. But I, whatever is scaring him is here. And I mean right here. So I just think there might be more to this whole story. Well, right, <clears throat> I'll get it. Um, let's, let's, well, let's talk about this. Hello. Hi, it's Andrew. Look, I need your help. Um, I think we've got a problem on our hands. Charmin's not squeezably soft. Maybe the fluffer broke down. <laughs> Miss Cannon, are you ready to resume testimony? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Gannon? Further questions. Cross? Yes. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Miss Gannon, you've testified that Todd Manning made sexual advances to you. Can you tell the court the nature of these advances? I don't understand what you mean. I mean, was it a look, something he said, something he did? He said it. Are you saying that his advances were verbal? Yes. Did he ever make any physical advances to you? No. Did he ever touch you during a conversation you may have had? I don't remember. Would you remember if he had touched you in an inappropriate way? Yes. So we can conclude that Mr. Manning never made any f untoward physical advances to you? Yes. Okay. Okay. We gather from your testimony that you're not particularly fond of Mr. Manning. Is that correct? Yes. Did you ever feel physically threatened by him? No. I, I was uncomfortable, but... Uh, but you weren't afraid of him, were you? No. You didn't fear any physical harm from him? No. Okay. All right. Now, the night of the spring fling party... Did you ever at any time go to Kevin Buchanan's room at the Kappa Alpha Delta house? At any time? No. Did you see at any time Marty Saybrook alone with any one of the four defendants? No. So in short, you had no knowledge whatsoever of anything that went on between Marty and the four defendants? No. And I was wrong that night to accuse Kevin of sleeping with Marty. He could have never done that and lied to me. I know as sure as I've ever known anything in my life, Kevin could not hurt anybody, let alone rape them. He was you worried to object. about this Marty. Opinion he was object. trying to look out for her because she, she was upset and she had had too much to drink. He took her up to his room so that she could sleep off all that she had drunk. That is the only reason. And then he went up there only to get his car keys out of his jacket so that Emily Haynes could get to her car. That is all. He is no rapist. Objection, Your Honor. Are you all right? I, I, I just got to think. About what? What's going on? I can't think. Talk to me, Marty. Something's wrong. Do you feel okay? Something's very wrong. No further questions, Your Honor. We direct. 
Not at this time, Your Honor. This court stands in recess until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. All rise. Boy, she uh, really saved our butts that time. That was pretty impressive. Uh, she was adequate. But face it, fellas. <laughs> No woman is ever going to be 100% on your side in this case. Hey, thanks for the good words about Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I uh, hate to go against my own profession, but uh, Clint and Vicky would both want me to alert you that most of the reporters are expecting the two of you to go out the rear and the side exits, so, you know, your best bet is to go out the front door. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate that. Yeah, don't mention it to anyone, ever. <laughs> Reverend Carpenter has got a lot of serious things to think about, so don't bother him about ghosts. Sorry, Dad. I'm not going to talk about ghosts to anyone, any, anymore. Okay, sure. Well, uh, thank you, Al. How about some lemonade? Okay. CJ, you want some? Um, okay. Max, won't you come help me squeeze some lemons? Um, okay. I can't talk to any girls anymore. At all? About the ghosts. They'll never believe us. So what are we doing? We'll have to get rid of the ghosts ourselves. But I think I know how. You had a rough day, huh, Rach? Why don't you lie down, honey, huh? No, no, I'm okay, really. Hey, we could we go to a movie, grab some dinner or something? I don't want to go out. Yeah. Would all of you just stop looking at me? God, your sympathy is worse than what Dad... I'm worried about you, that's all. Worried about me? What about Kevin? What about what my testimony's gonna do to him? What it's gonna do to me, Rachel? Well, would you please just stop acting like it didn't happen? My testimony on the stand... What you said on the stand was great. What? What? He's right. You gave an impromptu testimonial to Kevin's good character. Yeah. Uncle Bo is right. I don't think anyone has ever said anything about me that meant as much as that did. I'll get it. Talk to me, Rachel. Tell me what's going on. I can't stop thinking about Kevin. You remember something more from the night of the party? No. But when I talked with Luna before, she said, that you have to listen to what's in your heart. Yeah, Luna saved my life by listening to her heart and Max's. When I heard Rachel's testimony before, I thought my heart was going to explode. It was so loud. I don't have any proof. But I think I was wrong about Kevin. I don't think he... He wasn't one of them. You don't think he raped you? That's what I feel. In my heart. And... 
can't ignore that feeling. Hi. Uh, you, you are... Carol. Carol Swift. Carol Swift, yes. You've been a visitor at St. James from time to time, yes. right? Carol asked to see you. She said she had something important to tell you. I have to tell someone what I know. I've kept quiet for too long. Okay, what's this about? About Marty Saybrook. About what really happened at the Spring Flame.